Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Now typically on this channel, Big Rock Moto, I review normal everyday gas powered motorcycles, but the world is changing and my videos will slowly reflect more electrified vehicles over time. Although don't worry, we're definitely keeping the core of the content with normal motorcycles. Electric mopeds and electric bikes are really starting to change the world. If you see things like the Super 73 or also things like this Aerial Rider X-Class 52 volt, uh, which is essentially an electric moped, and we'll talk a little bit more about the difference between electric moped and electric bike later on, these bikes are really changing how people get around, especially in urban congested areas. So why would you potentially choose something like this, an electric moped, over a typical motorcycle? Well, I'll give you the reasons why right up front. So to start off with, this bicycle right now retails for only $2,300, which is far cheaper than just about any motorcycle, although there might be a couple small exceptions to that. This bike does not require a motorcycle license or any sort of special license to ride. It doesn't have registration fees. It doesn't cost you money in insurance. And you can ride it and park it just about anywhere you could a bicycle. So that makes it very, very different than a motorcycle. So today we're reviewing this, the Aerial Rider X-Class 52 volt. And we're gonna find out what this bike specifically is all about, how it's made, what the features are, how it performs. but. During the review, we're also gonna be talking about, you know, what are the benefits of getting around on something like this? Now, full disclaimer, Ariel did send me this bike for this test. They wanted me to feature it in one of my videos and I do get to keep the bike after the review. So keep that in mind as I'm going through. When you're operating an electric moped or an electric bike, an e-bike, you really need to understand the local laws in your local area uh, governing where and how fast you can ride something like this. There's a potential for uh, people to ride them too fast or ride them in areas where they're not technically allowed to, which will eventually lead to trails and sidewalks and areas being closed down, more laws being created to keep these bikes off the road. So please be respectful uh, based on the local area where you live and ride within the laws and ride safely. The Aerial Rider X-Class 52 volt uses just what you would think. It's 52 volt because it's a 52 volt battery. The battery capacity is 18 amp hours, which may not mean a lot to you, and we'll talk about the range a little bit further on in the video, but it's a pretty large battery pack. Now, the motor, so how does this thing actually drive along? So it, it does have pedal, so you can do pedal assist, uh, which basically when you pedal, it gives you extra power to get up hills and go faster but it also has a motorcycle style throttle right here. So you don't have to pedal at all, you can use it as a scooter or as a moped. Now the motor is a hub drive motor and Ariel uses metal gears instead of plastic, which they say are much stronger and much more durable in the long run. They're also able to handle more power. Now speaking of power, it has a lot of power for one of these electric bikes. It uses a thousand watt motor at nominal power or up to 2000 watts of peak power. And in terms of torque, it makes 110 Newton meters of torque. This bike comes in around 75 pounds when it's fully assembled. So this is definitely not lightweight, but all of these electric mopeds like this, whether it's this bike or the Super 73 or any of the other ones, they're all gonna weigh in this range. The reason for that is they have a large heavy duty frame, they have full suspension, they have big wide rims and tires, and the battery and the motor weigh quite a bit. So it's a heavy duty machine. So let's take a tour around the X-Class 52 volt. So starting up here in the front, you notice the big, wide, fat, cushy, uh, knobby type tires. They're a 20 inch rim and tire. They're four inches wide, so you get a lot of traction. You're also gonna notice the motorcycle style inverted upside down fork, and it does have adjustments up here uh, for compression and rebound damping, which is quite uh, high end for a bicycle like this. So I really like the heavy duty fork. Uh, you notice it has a motorcycle style LED headlight round, which kind of gives you that retro look. So that's really nice. I do appreciate that. 
Um, up here on the controls, you do have hydraulic uh, Tektro brakes. They uh, drive 180 millimeter rotors. Uh, they're a twin piston caliper. Actually, these brakes are surprisingly powerful. It's one thing I really, really like about the bike. Uh, you've got an LCD uh, dashboard control up here uh, with different buttons to change your uh, pedaling modes, to control your lights, and control a few other things. You've got a seven speed shifter. You've got Nice little bell so you can let people know that you're coming on your Aerial X class. Uh, let's see, you've got these leather kind of uh, ergonomic style grips. They're actually really, I really like this, uh, this shape of grip. I use ergon grips on my other bike, so really, really kind of appreciate that. And you have an adjustable stem. That's something that's really, really nice about this is you can adjust the angle on the stem up and down. So if you want the bars up higher or you want them lower, you simply loosen one bolt and you can adjust it. That was a very, very nice touch by Ariel to include that. You also notice this front fender up here, which may look a little strange. It almost looks like it's put on backwards, but this is correct. But what I like about this, it shields your legs and your body. If you're riding through water or mud or anything, which I actually have, it protects you from a lot of the spray coming up. So definitely a fender is a nice thing to have. So let's continue working our way around this side of the bike. So you notice the large uh, heavy duty metal frame. The battery is removable. So it's a big heavy battery pack, which all these bikes have. You can, uh, with the key, remove this and pull it off the bike in case you wanna take it inside to charge it, or if you're worried about something like theft. Uh, working our way back, you can see you've got the crank set and the pedals with the reflectors, obviously. Uh, you have this motorcycle style rear uh, coil spring shock with adjustable rebound damping and, and adjustable preload, spring preload. So that's a really nice touch to have that. Although we will talk about suspension performance a little bit later on because it is a little bit too stiff in my opinion. Uh, you've got this kind of uh, cool retro style seat, uh, which is another thing I'll talk about later. It's comfortable for the first maybe half an hour, but then you start to get a bit of discomfort with it. And then you've got this, uh, this frame extends back here so you can install either a cargo rack or you can get a two person uh, long seat if you wanna take a passenger with you. Uh, speaking of passengers, the bike does have uh, fold down uh, metal uh, passenger foot pegs here for carrying a passenger. Although keep in mind the load capacity, which I will list here below uh, in the text. And moving back here, you've got the seven speed derailleur. It's a Shimano Alta system, which is a decent quality system for a bike at this price point. And of course you've got the rear hub drive motor and the rear tire and the rear also does feature this uh, plastic fender to keep mud off you just like you saw there in the front. Coming around to the back of the Ariel X-Class 52, uh, you've got uh, what you can see the large rear brake disc here. You've got the quick or the uh, dropouts for the axles. You can see the other passenger peg here in the back. You've got a nice uh, heavy duty kickstand. You know, I ride like high-end like road bikes and mountain bikes, and of course they don't have kickstands. I really, it's so handy to have this kickstand. I can't even tell you, it's such a nice change. Um, you can see some of the wiring here that goes back to the motor. They've got it nicely cable tied here to the frame. I also wanted to I also wanted to point out that the bike does have a pretty nice LED uh, tail light brake light combo. So when you turn the lights on, which you do from the little LCD panel, it turns on the headlight and it turns on the tail light, and then it also has a brake light feature. So I think that's really nice. That's uh, showing you that they're really looking after your safety when you're out there on the road. So I wanna talk about the riding position and how some of the controls on the aerial work. Uh, but first let's talk about the assembly. So the bike will come in a box which looks like a large screen TV. Actually, when UPS uh, dropped it off, they said, oh, nice new TV. I actually hit say, uh, it's a bicycle, but they didn't know that. Um, anyway, so it comes packaged really, really well. I was really impressed with, you know, how they had everything wrapped in, uh, you know, bubble wrap and foam and very well protected. Uh, very good packaging job that they did. When you take it out of the box, and I'll put some pictures here, um, it's pretty easy to put together. You could almost do it without the instructions, but they do give you very clear instructions. Essentially, you know, you put on the handlebar, you put the wheels on, um, you connect a couple things. I mean, we're talking about maybe half an hour at most, so really easy to do, and I was really impressed with, you know, the ease of the setup, so that was a good job by Ariel there. Now, let's talk about the riding position, some of the controls. So you can see here, uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Um, this is not a bicycle that you're gonna spend a lot of time pedaling. Um, you're gonna buy this really to scoot around, you know, with, under the electric motor. Now you can pedal it, but if you notice, um, 
you see when my pedal is at the top of the stroke how high my knees are in relation to my torso. Uh, so this is not a good pedaling position for comfort or for developing power. However, the flip side of that is it's very easy to touch the ground unlike you know, a performance bicycle where you can barely touch the ground because the seat is so high for efficient pedaling. This, you can touch the ground very, very easily and you have this nice, wide, relatively comfortable seat. Um, the handlebars are relatively narrow and they do have some pullback here on the bar ends. Like I said, you can adjust the stem. I've got it at about a 45 degree angle and I find this riding position to be very comfortable. You can see I just have a very slight forward lean, which I find lends really good control of the bike, um, almost like riding a motorcycle, right? Um, I see some bikes with the bars like way up here. That's horrible for control, for braking, for uh, handling the bike. So I don't recommend that. I think this is a good riding position um, the way they've set this up. So let's talk about this little uh, LCD panel and how this works. So um, you basically have five levels of pedal assist, or you can turn the pedal assist off. You can also go in here, configure the settings of the bike. You can control your headlight. Uh, you can see your speed and a few other things like that. It also gives you a battery indication of how much battery you have left. So maybe in the future, uh, if they had an upgrade to like a larger like TFT, like a color panel with more information or even a touchscreen, boy, that would be really cool. But they're saving money and they're doing it this way, but the bike is a relatively affordable price, so I can understand that. So when you're looking at getting an electric moped or an electric bicycle, uh, one thing you're worried about is how far can you go? What is the range? Now, here's what I will say about range on any sort of electric vehicle, bicycle, whatever. Um, I find that they're extremely dependent on a lot of things, but mostly, uh, how many hills are you climbing? How fast are you going? And are there any other interesting factors like really extreme temperatures or how much load or weight you're carrying as well? So what I mean is that the range can vary dramatically. It could be 70 miles plus, which they claim in the brochure, but I think that's under ideal conditions. Um, or it might be you know much lower than that, 30 miles, 40 miles. I live in the mountains. We have a lot of very, very steep roads. Uh, very steep climbs, a lot of elevation change. So I'm really using up a lot of energy to go up mountains, basically. Now, I haven't really uh, done a range test yet. I hope to do that in the future to see really like how far can you climb or how far can you go in the mountains. But most of you are gonna be buying this to use in the city and you're not gonna be climbing mountains like where I live. So you're gonna have a better range than I do. Uh, but I will say the battery is very, very large on this. At 18 amp hours, uh, you have a lot of electricity here. So for me, riding you know five or 10 miles at a time, including a lot of climbing, the battery barely went down at all. So I think a lot of you are gonna have that 50 plus mile range that they quote, just depending on how you're using it and how fast you're going. It is tempting with something like this to just twist the throttle all the way and go everywhere at full speed because it's a blast. It's a lot of fun and you get to where you're going very quickly. And if you do that, you're gonna see probably a little bit less range. Now let's talk about charging. So the charger that it comes with uh, is this right here. So it's an aerial branded charger. You've got a power light and a charge light. This plugs into a standard household outlet. Now I believe this charges at about 2.5 amps. Yeah, here it is. DC output 52 volts, 2.5 amps. So if it's an eight, if it's an 18 amp hour battery, then that's going to take around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, around seven hours or so to fully charge. Right, 18 divided by 2.5 would be around seven hours to fully charge it. So if you're using it during the day, as long as you plug it in at home overnight, it's going to be fully charged. You know. Uh, definitely overnight. If you're riding it to the office, plug it in at the office, a normal uh, work day, and it's gonna be fully charged for your commute to get back home. So let's talk about the pros and the cons, and then we'll go into some final thoughts. So what are the pros of the Aerial X-Class 52 volt? Um, so a lot of these pros are gonna be specific just to the Aerial, but I think in general, they're kind of also talking about the pros of an electric moped or a powerful electric bicycle like this in general because it, it's such an awesome way to get around as opposed to a car or a motorcycle or a regular bicycle. So why is that? So here are the pros to the aerial as I see it. Uh, number one, it has a lot of power, it's very fast, and it's very fun to ride. Now with that, use caution. Wear a helmet, wear some safety gear, wear gloves, be careful, don't do anything stupid because this is faster than a bicycle 
and it's almost like riding a small motorcycle, especially if you're going around the city. So just be cognizant of the safety gear of your surroundings because a lot of people are getting hurt on this type of thing. And I know you've seen some of that in the news. Anyway, just be careful. But yeah, the pro is that it's a lot of fun and it's very, very fast. There's a lot of other things I like about the Ariel. The fact that it has full suspension, it's not like a premium level suspension. I mean, again, you're buying this whole bike for $2,300, but you do have adjustments on the suspension, so that's really nice, and it does absorb quite a bit of the bumps. Uh, one other thing I like about it is the brakes are very, very strong. When I first got the bike, I was really worried that when I saw like a mountain bike style brake, that I'm like, well, this thing weighs 70 pounds. How is that gonna work? But let me tell you, the brakes are very, very powerful. I was very impressed with that. I think another pro to this bike is the carrying capability. Whether you want to load it up with boxes and luggage and, and you know deliver stuff or take stuff around town, you can do that. Or you can get the longer seat and carry around a passenger, which I think would be a lot of fun. And actually, I'm looking forward to taking my wife out for a ride on this. I think we'll have a lot of fun. We also have a little trailer uh, to tow our two-year-old daughter around, and she absolutely loves going for rides, towing behind this thing. And because I can use the throttle, so if I don't want to pedal or because I'm in the mountains, it's steep, I can you know, zoom around with her, uh, being careful, of course, and it's so much fun. And I think my wife would like to, you know, get the double seat so we can both ride together and then take the baby in the, in the uh, trailer. I think that's going to be a ton of fun. So what are the cons to the Ariel X Class 52 volt? So there's a few things that I think that Ariel could potentially improve, uh, but keeping in mind that this is a very good value product. So uh, these are not terrible things, but they're just things I think they could look at. The headlight, while I think the styling is really cool and retro, it's not that bright. It doesn't illuminate really well at night. So I think they could get a bit more power out of the headlight. Uh, the seat comfort is not very good. The seat is stylish, uh, but you know, after about half an hour, you start to really feel the seat. So I don't know if it's a shape or the padding or what it is, but I think that could be a bit more comfortable. Also, the rear shock seems to be really, really stiff. I don't know if there's too much damping or if the spring rate is too high or whatever it is. I did back off the preload and turn out the damping, but it still feels like you don't get much bump absorption when you're riding by yourself. Now, they may have done that so that when you ride it with a passenger, that then the, the shock would work really well. But if you're riding solo and if you're a lighter person, like under 200 pounds, uh, you're gonna feel that the rear shock is a bit stiff. Final thoughts on the Ariel Rider X Class 52 Volt. I think that you're gonna to start to see a ton of bikes like this out on the road if they're already not out there, and here's why. Whether it's this specific model or one of its competitors, what these machines offer is, in my opinion, the perfect compromise between a motorcycle or a scooter being gas powered, or even an electric motorcycle, uh, and a bicycle or an electric bicycle. And here's what I mean. This combines sort of the, the speed and hauling ability and the convenience of like a motorcycle or a scooter with the go anywhere and park anywhere practicality of a bicycle. And that, if you think about it, that's a pretty crazy good combination. And if you add in the fact of pricing, so in terms of value, for $2,300, I dare you to buy a decent quality motorcycle for that amount of money, except maybe there might be something like the uh, new Honda, uh, whatever their mini moto is, that I can't remember what, the Navi, that's right. So that's pretty affordable, but you have to run gas, you have to insure it, you have to register it, and you have to have a motorcycle license to get that. You don't have to do any of that with this. This is legally a bicycle. Now, depending on how you configure the software, you can unlock it to go faster and be aware of your local laws on that. But it says right here, class two e-bike on the frame. So if you have the computer set up with the factory settings, you can ride it anywhere. You can ride a class two e-bike, even though it's kind of a motorcycle or kind of a scooter. So it's in some ways, it's like cheating. And that's why I say, please be respectful of laws, be respectful of other users on the trail or on the road, pedestrians, because you can get going pretty fast on one of these things. So would I buy this over something like a small gas powered scooter? Well, the answer for me is absolutely 1000% yes. Because if you go and buy something like a Vespa or a little Honda scooter, um, not only does it have emissions and it has noise, you have to have the licensing, you have to have the insurance, and we've been through that, but it's also gonna cost more money and you can't ride it anywhere like you can something like this. So I think a bike like this, whether it's this or one of its competitors, is an amazing deal for urban mobility, but also just for having fun. 
So wrapping this up, I really wanna thank Ariel for sending this bike out for me to use, to test, to use in my videos and, and do a review. I really, really appreciate that, the trust that they've shown in me and this channel. And I also appreciate all of you for watching. I sincerely hope you've gotten value and you've learned something from this video about bikes like this and what they're good for. So if you have, please support Big Rock Moto and there's all the different ways to do that down below in the description. Uh, thanks again to Ariel, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and uh, please ride safe and we'll see you out there.